The next speaker will be Johanna Leisner. Uh, is, she, is she online? Super. So Johanna Leisner is uh, chair of the EU OMC group, the Cultured Heritage and Resilient uh, of, uh, or Climate Change. So she, has, she brings in uh, to our conference the, 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 the aspect of heritage. So cultural, also cultural and creative industries is, has to be also seen in a broader sense that we have also the responsibility to bring heritage on the table, so to say, or to work with heritage more. Uh, she, is, uh, she is a trained chemist uh, and worked in Germany and uh, in, the, in the States. Yeah, she's working right now uh, uh, as a research, uh, research in various EU national projects for 20 years. I forgot that. Uh, she's working with the focus on climate change, uh, environmental pollution, and en en environmental sense of development, and sustain sustainability issues like the green, green museums. I mean, her, her phrase or her, her, her motto is strengthening cultural heritage resilience for climate change, where the Green Deal meets cultural heritage. So the, 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 the stage is yours. Thank you. Thank you for the nice introduction, Garin. Dobre rano, dami e panove, postrafs Bruselo do Prahi. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. In the World Heritage City of Prague, we stay a little bit in the field of creativity because cultural heritage is the creativity of the past. It is about how our ancestors were fighting against the big challenges they always had against climate, but also climate crisis. In former hundreds of years, we always had climate crisis and resource crisis and energy crisis. So it is a great honor for us, the OMC expert group of member states, that we have today the opportunity to present in a very short overview the work we have been doing over the past one and a half years. I try to share my presentation. Okay. We have presented our final report and it was published by the Commissioner Maria Gabriel on the 7th of September. And here I would like to give you just a short overview. As it was already mentioned by Minister Sikela and also by the Member of Parliament, Mr. Ehler, we are really experiencing a very critical time. After 70 years of, of peace, we have war and an energy crisis, as it was already mentioned again by Mr. Ehler. And this energy crisis is very strongly linked to climate change. Meanwhile, the scientists are not speaking of climate change any longer, but we are only speaking about the climate crisis. This has an enormous impact on us as human beings, on our economy, on our nature, and of course, on cultural <laughs> heritage. We need to get prepared to adapt and to fight for cultural heritage as this is the creativity of the past and it presents not only a great source of inspiration, it also is an enormous uh, economic factor uh, as it, especially in Europe, cultural heritage is the powerhouse and it represents also our European values. Next slide, please. Yeah, what is about this OMC Open Method of Coordination Expert Group of Member States? In this OMC group, we had 28 countries which sent their delegates. Open method means that it is up to the member state whether they think a topic is important so that they are sending delegates. And 28 countries have sent delegates and that shows that on the level of member states, the topic of saving cultural heritage in times of climate change, what are the challenges is an important topic and it is high on the political agenda. What were the tasks of the member of, uh, we have been given by the Cultural Affairs Committee of the European Council? So it is the first time that the topic of climate change and cultural heritage has received a political mandate. That is the first political mandate in the world which has given to this topic. We looked into the state of play. What is the situation in the EU and in the member states? We looked into what are the most emerging threats uh, which are um, 
impacting our cultural heritage. A core part was to look whether we have already good practices in Europe where we are implementing measures, how we can protect heritage against climate change. And as heritage is not only a victim of climate change, it can also make substantial contributions to mitigate, as it was already mentioned by Mr. Ehler, we need also to mitigate and to fight against climate change in line with the European Green Deal goals. Awareness raising, this is why I'm here today, is to make you aware that there is a problem, but that we are optimistic that we can solve these problems. We had to produce a report, and in this report, we have formulated 10 recommendations for the EU and for the member states. What is the situation of cultural heritage and climate change in the different policies of the, of the member states? I can only say that there are nine countries which have not at all included cultural heritage in their mainstream policies. And that is the sustainability strategy, the climate adaptation plan, and the recovery and resilience plan. Because the recovery and resilience plan is an important measure where, when it is included, we can also get money in order to prepare our cultural heritage in the fight against climate change. Here I can only highlight, for example, Spain and Italy, they have both uh, in their adaptation plan to, to climate change, they have not only listed cultural heritage, they even have developed a whole program and also in the recovery and resilience plan. We have asked our delegates, what do you think are the most important threats for cultural heritage in times of climate change? And it is very obvious that uh, the extreme climate events like severe precipitation, as we have experienced it in 2021 in Germany, in Belgium, in the north of France, this enormous flood which has taken away so many lives but also completely destroyed cultural heritage buildings. Long heat wave and droughts as we have experienced it this summer, we have sea level rise because many of the cultural heritage in European countries are along the coastline, but also indirect threats are a very important um, challenge. Indirect threats which are coming, for example, when coastal erosion is taking away whole villages or when the permafrost is melting in the northern parts of Europe and also villages are abandoned and cultural heritage is left alone strong winds, but also gradual climate change, increase of pests. What you can see here, this beetle, is an important uh, threat for archives, for libraries, for museums, historic houses. The dieback of vegetation and migration of foreign species is an important problem for our historic gardens, our cultural landscapes, which give joy to the people, especially during the pandemic. It was seen that the people are using our cultural landscapes, our parks, historic gardens to recover and to uh, get connection with nature again. And all this is really an important um, challenge and task we have ahead of us. How can we best save and protect our cultural heritage so that it still can be used by the people and also by the creative industry to get inspired what our ancestors have been developing in past centuries. We ask also what is the, uh, the risk potential by type of heritage and no wonder buildings and monuments can be were ranked at the first place. Here you can see the famous Karlstein Castle not far away from Prague. Cultural landscapes are very much threatened by droughts, severe precipitation and long heat waves. Also underwater heritage because of sea level rise. What was less um, mentioned is the movable heritage. For example, the collections which are placed inside museum, historic buildings, libraries, 
Why? Because here we have not enough research results because there is still a lack of research, especially in the member states. Well, a core piece of our work over the one and a half years was to collect good practice examples from, from the countries in Europe. And this was the most difficult task. Why? Because nobody of our delegates knew whom shall we call, where uh, is all this information stored? Does anybody know exactly what kind of examples we have already implemented? It was like an investigative task, like a criminal task to find out who, who is the murderer. We wanted to know who has all this information. But finally, we found uh, 83 good practice examples in 26 countries in Europe. Only two countries could not provide any examples. And a very bi uh, big surprise was that most of these good practice examples were driven by research. So research is the indispensable driver for implementation to find solutions, how we can mitigate and fight against climate change. And these good practice examples are a source of inspiration and for scaling up. And I hope that this will be taken up by the new EIT culture and creativity as Mr. Ela has already mentioned, here are, this is really the project, the program for the future where we can make an impact. You can find these 83 good practice examples, which are collected on 183 pages. Here you have the link where you can download these 183 pages of good practice examples. I would just want to give you some examples from our good practice examples from adaptation and mitigation. Here we can see an example from Austria. It is about traditional skills and knowledge, which we have already forgotten. forgotten. It is about an old air cooling system from the 19th century that helps us to reduce not only the heat in the auditorium, but also by CO2 saving because we don't need any energy to use this passive traditional air well system. Another important um, example is from France, from the World Heritage City of Bordeaux. And here we see the importance of regulation and planning. It is important that cultural heritage is already in the start when you do planning against uh, the climate change. If you do planning in a city, in a village, that you have to bring in the cultural her heritage experts right from the beginning. And it is possible to combine climate, to fight against climate change, while at the same time respect the preservation and uh, the ethics, how to keep cultural heritage. Another example is that we have to think cultural and natural heritage together in one hand because they are uh, very important to become climate neutral. Here it is an example from Germany where a historic uh, landscape and historic garden together with a castle, they could find means in order to become climate neutral by 2025. And that shows we need creativity. We need the inspiring ideas from the creative and cultural sector, from architects, from heritage managers, but also from the craft uh, business. Here together, we are able to make this ensemble of cultural and natural heritage climate neutral. Another very important example is from Norway, and here you can see that if we invest into the upgrading, in the renovation of old buildings, we are not only solving the climate crisis, but we are also solving the housing crisis. I can see everywhere in Europe abandoned old houses. They are not listed monuments, but they are just old houses, maybe 70, 40, 50 years old. They are abandoned and new houses are built on the outskirts, which are all the same appearance. And here we can solve the housing crisis if we renovate and update and upgrade these old buildings and make them climate friendly. And we then can really make an important impact also to reduce the CO2 footprint. 
I'm nearly at the end. Here are some key messages from our 10 recommendations we have for the EU, but also for the member states. So cultural heritage is really threatened by climate change, by the climate crisis in an unprecedented speed and scale. But we can also offer solutions and inspiration how to solve this climate crisis. Heritage and climate change, they need to be considered in all policies, in all planning decisions, on all levels. We need cooperation, and I hope this we will be doing in the new EIT, Culture and Creativity. And we also have to say that research is the indispensable driver for implementation. And here, it is not the EU where the research topics are missing. This is missing mainly on national level. There are so many European countries which don't have any research program to protect cultural heritage from climate change. And here, this is a task for the member states. And we must invest into upskilling and capacity building of experts. Again, here, this is something where EIT, culture and creativity can make an impact because we want to invest into the upskilling, into the skills of the people, and especially in the South and Eastern countries. Here, I think you have so much of cultural heritage and we need trained and, uh, and upskilled experts. The best practice examples show that it is more climate friendly to invest in upgrading buildings or, for example, intangible heritage uh, like the art of making dry stone walls, which you can find very often in the south, in the southern countries of Europe. And we need a common platform at EU and national level, where we collect not only the information, but where we can exchange also our knowledge and the data we have. And again, coming back to money, of course, it is important. We need to invest money into the protection of cultural heritage. So far, we have no data what kind of economic costs uh, are ahead of us in order to adapt and mitigate cultural heritage. We would need a kind of cultural um, stern review on the economics of climate change for cultural heritage. Thank you very much for your patience and I'm looking forward to the discussions and I think uh, the EIT partnership, culture and creativity will enhance the transition to make cultural heritage climate fit. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Johanna. Uh, uh, is it possible to share the slides? So then we can put it up on our web page and yes, everybody can download. Yes. Yes, Perfect. please, you can uh, give it to everybody who wants to know more about our best practice examples and the dangers we see for cultural heritage. Great. So thank you. I mean, this, it was very interesting, your, 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 uh, your explanations. I mean, for me, heritage was always far away and very old and very sometimes boring. Uh, but I, I mean, it, it, it's a matter of fact that, that uh, heritage, museums and libraries are one of the, of the 12 sectors within the creative industries. Uh, and, and I think you, you showed it perfectly how, how we could interact also with the other uh, 11 sectors. And, and I see uh, alone of, uh, with, with your examples, I see, you know, that there is a lot of things, you know, the rest of the creative industries can contribute to this and also what we can, the others can learn from, from conserving, from bringing heritage uh, to the 21st century, so to say, digitalization, uh, uh, communication, uh, and so on. So I think there's a lot that we can develop together. And, and I mean, since Johanna is also in the EAT, I think we will see us uh, much more often then. <laughs>